the Phillies on top, one to nothing. Pitch to McBride, swing, fly ball, center of field, Mookie Wilson there, makes the catch, roots and tags, here's Wilson's throw, or his Trevino just as the ball comes to Trevino, pops out of his glove, Ruthven scores and the Phillies lead it 2-1. The 2-2 pitch, a shot to deep right center field, that ball is carrying well, that ball is not going to be caught. It bounces out over the fence, it'll be a ground rule double, and Gary Maddox will score the insurance run the Phillies were looking for. 3-1 Phillies on the ground rule double by Del Unser. The set by Berenguer. Here's the 2-1 pitch to Rose. Here's a hard hit ball through for a base hit and two more runs are going to score. Pete Rose delivers a single up the middle and the Phillies have busted it open here in the ninth inning. Two more runs across the plate. The Phillies lead it 5-1. The Phillies were hanging tough. But a mini slump found them two and one half games behind after losing to Chicago on September 19th. However, the Expos were going into a mini slump of their own. And within two days, the Phils would be again just one half game behind. On September 22nd, the Phillies pulled out a three to two victory over the St. Louis Cardinals in 10 innings. With rookie Keith Moreland providing the offensive heroics as Steve Carlton garnered win number 23. And Tug McGraw, notch save number 18. Seaman ready with a 2-2 pitch. Fly ball, right field. Dropping quickly as a fair foul, a fair ball. Extra bases. Bull was rounding third. He's going to score. And Moreland's in the second with a double. And the Phillies lead it 3-2 on Keith Moreland's pinch hit double down the right field line. The Phillies return home on September 24th for their final homestand of the season. In the opener of the homestand, the Phillies and Mets were at a nothing-nothing standoff after the regulation nine innings. Then in the tenth, Pete Rose snapped an 0 for 15 slump, and the Phillies had a one-to-nothing victory. Neil Allen getting his sign, checks the runner at second. Laviglia with a long lead. The pitch grounded up the middle, through the middle of base hit. Laviglia rounding third. He is going to score. The ball game is over. Pete Rose with a single, and the Phillies win it one to nothing. Pete, was that uh, the good curveball you hit there? No, sir. Uh, the first pitch was a curveball, and uh, I guess he thought I'd be looking for a curve. See, I don't know what they're going to do in that situation, Rich. I don't know if they're going to try to get me to go for a bad pitch or what, but the first one just, you know, ripped right off the table for a strike, and he came back with the fastball. And, and so the beat went on. The next night, the Phillies moved into first place by a half game when they again beat the Mets 2-1. to one. The game was scoreless in the fifth when the combined bats of Manny Trio, Gary Maddox, Larry Boa, and Lonnie Smith provided the two runs that it took to win. Hit to the right field corner, giving chase as Washington. He can't get that ball. It's in play off the wall. Manny Trio round second. He's heading for third, and Manny will have a stand-up triple. Drive left field and a base hit. Run scores. Phillies lead it one to nothing. Gary Maddox lines Jackson's first pitch to left field, and Gary has his 71st run batted in, and the Phillies have a lead. Jackson has his sign. And here's the pitch to him. Bouncing ball back the middle. It's through for a base hit. Larry Bow is going to score. Bystrom holds it second. Phillies lead the ball game two to nothing on a RBI single by Lonnie Smith. Now the Montreal Expos were in town for a big three-game series. In the first game, the score was tied at 1-1, entering the bottom of the ninth inning, when Bake McBride caught hold of a Dave Palmer pitch, and the Phillies led the division by a game and a half. Bake McBride stands in. He is singled in three at bats. Here's Palmer's pitch to him. Swing and a long drive. Deep right. It's got a chance. Out of here. Ball game's over. Phillies win 2-1. to one. Bake McBride a home run. However, the Expos came back to win the final two games of the series, and the Phillies were now down a half game. The issue would be resolved in the final week of the season. On September 29th, the Chicago Cubs were in town. They had a chance to play the spoilers, and they were doing a good job of it. The game was tied at 3-3 when the Cubs scored two runs in the top of the 15th inning to take the lead. A loss could well have cost the Phillies the division championship. 
but Gary Maddox and Manny Trio would not let that happen. 1-1 pitch, swing and a base hit, center field tie game. Gary Maddox, a two-out line drive single to center, and the Bills are still alive. It's 5-5 in the 15th. The 1-1 pitch, swing and a ground ball, base hit. Phillies win it 6-5. Maddox scores. Trio delivers with a ground single to center field. Phillies have come back to beat the Cubs 6-5 in 15 innings. The key blows, game tying two-out single by Maddox. And the game winning two-out single by Manny Trio. That win was the turning point for the Phillies. The Phillies wouldn't lose again until the National League East had been resolved. The Phillies followed up that game with a 14-2 pounding of the Cubs. In the third game of the series, Steve Carlton recorded his 24th win of the season with a 5-0 blanking of Chicago. In the final regular season home game, the Phillies were to claw their way to a share of first place with the Expos. On the way to Schmidt. Swing and a long drive, deep center field. Out of here, home run. Michael Jack Schmidt has just set a personal high with his 46th home run of the year. Phillies have tied it at one. The set by Caudle, pitch on the way. Line drive, center field, base hit. Unser being waved around. Here comes Martin's throw back in, not in time. And the Phillies lead the ball game two to one. There's the one strike pitch to Bittner. Check swing, ground ball, third base. Schmidt plays to second. There's one back to first. Double play. Phillies got the twin killing. They're out of trouble in the eighth inning. So it was on to Montreal. The mission was now clear cut. Win two out of three and become National League Eastern Division champs. The Phillies' destiny was in their own hands. In the first game, the Phillies went up by one. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Fastball, long drive. Watch that, baby. Way out of here, home run. Michael Jack Schmidt has just tied Eddie Matthews. Record for all-time homers by a third baseman in the season, number 47. Phillies lead it two to nothing. Carter back in. Here's Tug to the windup in the 2-2 pitch. Called third strike. He struck him out with a fastball right across the middle. He caught him looking. And Tug McGraw strikes out the side in the eighth inning. Back at Olympic Stadium in Montreal. Harry Callis with you where the Phillies have down the Expos by a score of 2-1. Brilliant pitching tonight by Dick Ruth and Sparky Lyon, especially Tug McGraw. Tug going the last two innings, striking out five of the six men he faced. So the Phillies have a game lead on Montreal. Tug, 20th save of the year. You look like you had outstanding stuff tonight. Harry, it's, it's strange. It really is. This game of baseball is, is weird. Warming up tonight, I felt a little bit stiff, uh, maybe because of the coolness of the weather up here. Uh, I was extremely nervous. Once I got out, out on the field, everything seemed to be real calm, and, and uh, the, the pitches just seemed to come from, from nowhere. I really didn't feel as though I had really great stuff tonight. It's, I think when you feel that way, Harry, it makes you concentrate all that much more, and it makes you... Um, uh, work on your mechanics and make sure you do everything right. Tug, it looked to me like you caught a couple of hitters looking for the Scroogey and zip that fastball. Well, you know, Harry, like I said earlier, I, I just really didn't didn't feel as though I had overpowering stuff. And so what Booney and I did was try to mix up the pitches a lot. We, I shook off a whole bunch of signs. I kept shaking my head. Sometimes he'd give me the pitch I wanted and I'd shake my head and, until he come back to it. Just just to try to use everything we could to try to keep the hitters from uh, sitting on any one particular pitch. And, and uh, I think, I think they, they were really aware of the screwball tonight. And actually, um, I, I, the, the, the eighth inning, I did, I did make some real good pitches with the screwball. As it turned out, in the ninth, they were all sitting on the screwball, and I was able to get them with the fastball and the slider. So uh, tonight was one of those nights where fortunately everything worked out real well. Then in game two, after an eternal rain delay, the Phillies said to themselves, Let's get this thing over. The pitch to Boone. Back through the middle. Base hit. Here's Blake McBride being waved around. Here's the throw. It's going to be way off target. Boone goes into second. Phillies have tied the game. The pitch to Schmidt. Long drive to left field. He buried it. He buried it way back. Out of here. Home run. Mike Schmidt puts the Phillies up 6-4. to four. Oh, 
what a drive by Schmidt. Unbelievable. He hit that thing deep to the seats in left field. And the Phillies greet Schmidt at the plate. Mike clasps his hands. He shakes hands with all of his teammates. What a wild scene in Montreal. Here's the guy, Bob Boone, who got the base hit in the ninth inning of the game. Never would have gone over time. And Booney, uh, it's been a scuffling year for you. This has to make you feel pretty good. Feels great, Rich. I really came up here feeling very confident in this series. I just feel like with Tug out there, we just got the magic. And, uh, you know, with all the converse and all the frustrations that we've experienced in this club, this is just a super. It's still the first stopping point for us. And, and we've had a goal all year to not only get to the playoffs, but to, to go on past them. So we're just, we're ready. And we got the, the big guy going with two extra days rest. It's going to be really important to us. I'm just excited about it. We want to we wanna get in that series. Michael Jack. <laughs> You just drove Harry, <laughs> Harry Kellis crazy with that home run. Buddy, oh, this has nice. been quite a year. Nice going, buddy. Thank you, Rich. Uh, How do you feel? Uh, without a doubt, I feel as good as I've ever felt <laughs> in my life. Uh, Booney got the biggest hit of his career, and Gary against the Cubs, I think, uh, initiated this whole week for us with that hit uh, that he got with two outs. Well, here's the guy, Chuck McGraw, and Chuck, day after day, I have never seen a relief pitcher pitch the way you have, buddy. Beautiful. Richie, I'll tell you, this is a ball. <laughs> I didn't know that last inning whether I was ever going to be able to get it to the catcher or not. <laughs> Today was an eight pilot all day. That rain delay got up this morning and took three. Took three more when the game finally started, and then going out for the last inning, had to pump down a couple more, and we got it up there. I believe you're going to get a day off to, tomorrow, Doug, and uh, I believe we can safely tell the fans they can stay out tonight. They don't have to get their rest. Yeah, you don't have to get your rest tonight, <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Phyllis and Grandma, Dad, Uncle Hank, and Mark and Carrie, save some champagne for when we get home. We'll have a party together. <laughs> Paul Owens now is here. Paul, God love you. Vice President, General Manager of the Phillies. This is your fourth division crown. How does this one feel compared to the other? Yeah, I like this one better. I don't know. I, uh, the, the other years, I kind of felt we might do it, and uh, this year uh, we had our ups and downs early with our pitching, and uh, I, don't know, I just get a special one out of this one. Our guys have fought like hell. I think it's September, and we won all our games in a row, and uh, they could talk about having a little trouble down the clubhouse, but uh, these guys all want to win. I'll guarantee you that. It's pretty evident right now, isn't it? <laughs> Dick Rufin is here. Rufus winning the big game last right, night. Buddy. How does this one feel? This feels great. Dude, I mean, it just uh, all the adversity and everything for six months, and then to come in and do it. And uh, I'll tell you what, we can't say enough for Tug and Marty in, in the month of September as far as the pitching staff. I mean, we just made it for us. Pete Rose has just joined us. Pete's been talking to a million and one writers, and uh, Pete, you've been through it before, but what a ball game. What a win. What a division championship. Well, I think it was more like a three-ring circus today, Harry, and it was a ball game, but uh, yeah, they battled us tough, and uh, Booney got a key hit for us, and of course, Schmitty hit his 48th home run, and you know he's been hot this week, and uh, our pitching was excellent again, and we can stand here all day and talk about Tugger, because uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, he's the best reliever in the league right now. So what do you think? Speedy, I, I don't think there's any question about it. Let me tell you, you're a walking encyclopedia of every game that's ever been played and every game you've ever been involved in. I want to see you replay this one one time in 10 years. I know who made the errors. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we were trying to be too aggressive on the bases today. I think I think some of us forgot that the turf was wet. You know, just like when Schmitty hit the base at the left field and Lee held me up. Bake thought I was going. Uh, I don't know what Schmitty and Greg were doing on Greg's bases at the center field, but uh, they looked like they had a baton, so it looked like in the relay race or something. That's a hell of a race, isn't it? With this, he giving a baton to Schmidt. <laughs> so the Phillies were East Division champions, but they had been in the same position in 1976, 77, and 78. Could they overcome that worn-out jinx of not being able to win in postseason play? They were ready. <laughs> 